Hello, Cynthia. Oh, good. Cynthia's here. The gang's virtually the whole gang is here. This is great. Good, good, good. How are you okay. doing, Cynthia? Here you Unmute. <laughs> Unmute. Unmute. I said it's hard when you've talked to them every day for so long and they're not there. They're yeah, oh, I know. I know. Our con yes. My condolences to you on that. I know. Indeed. How old was mom? 94 and a half. Oh, wow. 94. Wow. That's a good... of the nurses gave her COVID. Oh. oh, no. Yep. Oh, no. Not good. Oh. Yeah. Well, a, a, a good span of years, though. That's amazing. Yeah. I just didn't expect it to happen. It was just, just went bam, bam, bam in three days. Was it. Oh, that's, that's How, very tough. We're health sorry. wise, she was in good health. Yeah. In fact, she oh. had COVID before from somebody from that facility. And then she recovered, but she never really recovered. And they never gave her the rest or the right treatment. Now they're saying, you know, they're fatigued and they need to rest. They were just making a walk and do all sorts of stuff. And she just gave out. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Very sorry to hear it. Yeah. Even I hate even it. at our even at our fairly middle age here, uh, when we lose a parent, it we become orphans. I know, I know. You don't realize that until it happens. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And a lot of a, a lot of our childhood <laughs> both goes out the door and comes back in to remind us. Yeah. Well, sorry, Cynthia, but yeah. glad you're here with us tonight. Thanks. Um, so, if I'm Victor, unless you say otherwise, we proceed. We are recording. Good evening. This is the. 479,000th meeting of the, I'm oh, sorry, not <laughs> really. This is the January meeting of the Community <laughs> Issues Committee of Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood Council. Uh, I believe, uh, Vic, we, can you take roll? Is that okay? Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Um, Dan Dixon. Here. John Barbera. I'm here. Sorry. Um, uh, oh, wait a minute. What, what happened here? Um, David Rivera. Here. Cynthia Gagne. Here. John DeMiglio. Here. Chuck Hart. Do sure. we have Chuck? Nope. nope. I'm going to hope that Chuck joins us because one of the items tonight is uh, something that he is. Uh, uh, has written up and, and would like to talk about. Did did you say earlier that he was going to be on or you were just hoping? I was hoping, sorry. Yeah, okay. I, I, I have no direct knowledge. Yeah, Dad, let me give him a, I'll give him a ring. Would you put you, good, good, David. But that Go is, um, so far six out of seven, so quorum is here. Ready to roll, very good. All right. Um, uh, we have a, uh, a guest tonight whose name I recognize since he is, oh, and uh, oh, we have two. Wait, I, I got to go to the participant list. Ah. Oh, Laurie, our, too, too. our, our uh, ever productive Lori Jacobs is here and also uh, a, a new attendee, uh, Cole, uh, Cole Ariola Carr who is, uh, if you've looked at the uh, Empower LA site lately, you'll know that he's a candidate for the, um, the uh, what we used to call census tract, but the district that I have represented low these many years, he's one of the two candidates, I believe. We're glad you're here. Uh, shall we, may we call you Cole? If you want to unmute. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's totally fine. Cole's totally fine. Good. Yeah, Thank, good you. To join you. Thank you. Glad, glad you're here. 
Okay, we will move ahead. Um, John Barbera? Yes. I think we talked about putting an item about the. Uh, well, let me put the agenda up. Oh, that's great. Thanks. I'm grateful to have a competent technical help here. <laughs> John, we, we talked about putting that item about that retail establishment over by Big Nick's on the agenda, but either I didn't do it or we decided not to, but is that something you can talk about it's, in public it, comment? It's, it's there, number seven. Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the wrong agenda. <laughs> is, this January? is this not January? <laughs> I don't know what you're looking at. All right, well, <laughs> you, you know what? You got to excuse Dan. He's he slept since then. So yeah. Uh, 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 okay. Well, catch me. Uh, we'll start with item two: public comment on non-agenda items. And when I trip up, you'll let me know immediately. I'm sure. Okay. Do we have any public comment this evening? Checking, checking, still checking. Oh. I have a question. Are we going to be meeting, do you know, um, April in person? I, no, I, we're going to be meeting in March. It, our understanding, and, and in fact, there, it is March that the live meetings begin again. Okay. That was I, do not know, is, I do not know if there's any plan for hybrid, uh, both public and uh, Zoom. Uh, I don't think we know that yet. No, but we'll keep it posted. We're endeavoring to uh, get back the use of uh, a room either at Peck Park or at uh, what we call City Hall, the municipal building on Beacon Street. Uh, so we'll get that set up, hopefully, through the end of this uh, fiscal year, or in, maybe to the end of the year, in, a, in probably our old room one of our old rooms and that will be a good thing. <clears throat> Anything else right now? Not seeing any hands. I will move ahead. The third item is uh, a motion and I'll need to, I'll need to make it a motion. Uh, I'll ask it to be made a motion to support Coastal San Pedro, community, their community in impact statement on council file 221537. Uh, that council file calls for the renaming of a portion of Harbor Boulevard uh, as Buscaino Way, Joe Busca, well, Buscaino Way to honor our former city councilman. And uh, John, if you can put that up, for us to see. Yeah. We'll have a we'll have a visual here shortly. We have a copy of their letter. Well, that's what he's trying to put up. Oh, sorry. This is the letter. This is the one. Yes, sir. We're not seeing it right now. It hasn't quite come up yet, John. Really? No, it's still the draft agenda. <laughs> oh. Okay. So then let me let me do this then. I'm sorry. Uh wait a second. Well, John, if you did not um open it and select it when you first shared, you're gonna to have to unshare and reshare. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Something almost happened.
something that turns off the light, but that is just light. Sorry, I just got a lot of things open. Hey, there you go. This is the document. Uh, a motion to rename the portion of Harbor Boulevard from 8th Street to 22nd Street as Buscaino Way was considered by the city council without committee review. Now this is, this is the motion by uh, Coastal Neighborhood Council. Whereas this was done without prior notice to, of, to the neighborhood councils in Council District 15 or to the public in general and was approved by the city council less in, in less than four days. We'll make the minor edits as, as needed. And whereas the city charter requires that adequate notice for city decision making be given to the neighborhood councils. That appears in section 907, the early warning system, which we get frequently in our emails, uh, early, early warnings about uh, issues coming up in city council. So it's, they quote from section 907, and whereas this motion to rename a street in San Pedro was proposed without any meaningful discussion or attempt to take into consideration the desires and wishes of community stakeholders. And whereas such an action constitutes self-indulgence by the city council and Harbor commission in contra contradistinction, there's a fine word, to their responsibility to respond to stakeholder needs. And whereas, it is the council member's civic duty to serve their community and constituency. Therefore, be it resolved, the Coastal San Pedro Neighborhood Council strongly opposes the city council's request to rename the portion of Harbor Boulevard Buscaino Way and implores the Board of Harbor Commissioners of the Port of Los Angeles to deny said request. The request should be sent back to the city council for the appropriate level of review by committees, neighborhood councils, and the public. And then, oh, excuse me, I got to get, okay. Be further resolved that neighborhood council recommends the city council and port of LA both adopt a policy of not naming public streets and buildings for individuals until they have been out of office for more than 10 years or are deceased. So <laughs> the real meat of this comes in the last sentence. Um, I think uh, all of us appreciate the fact that uh, Councilman Buscaino did a, actually, I'm going to stop myself right now. This is the motion as written by Coastal. Do I have a motion to support uh, hang on, your position? Hang, hang on, we got Lori in attendees. She's got her hand up. Okay. I, go ahead, Lori. Lori, go ahead, but I do want to make this, I, I do want to make this into a motion before we proceed. Okay, I just wanted to shed a little bit of light on this, Dan, if that's okay. Let's, wanted... let's, Let's, I, I would like- You go ahead, I'll, like wait. To, I'll wait, I'll uh, wait. Thanks, I'd like to ask for a, a motion to support this position uh, by Coastal and in general throughout the city. Do I hear a motion? Yeah, I'll make that motion, make, uh, oh, Dan. Okay. I'll second David, that motion. David Rivera makes the motion, Cynthia Gagne seconds it, thank you. Now, Lori please proceed. Okay, so just to let you know, I actually sent this motion to Coastal, okay? You did. And yes, I did. <laughs> so um, no. they, but um, they did add the paragraph about the charter, which gives it a little more uh, credence. Okay, so that was one point I wanted you to know. It's, it's uh, and they did um, approve it 100% um, unanimously. I know Central uh, voted on it, but they had meetings the same night, so I don't know, but my guess is they passed it. Um, this is not the only one of these um, city council, I, I want to say it was Krakorian, actually submitted this for three outgoing city council members to have some property or building named after them. Uh -huh. um, so listening to other groups discuss this motion, um, I think it's important that we not necessarily discuss 
Mr. Buske, Council Member Buscano per se, what we're trying to do is focus on the process. This was put in and voted on in four days with absolutely no input from communities, um, which is really odd. Um, and so for our particular one, it would go, I believe, to the Port Commission to make the final decision. So um, I just wanted to kind of share that, that this isn't the only one. It isn't just necessarily about Joe Buscano. And I don't think the discussion needs to be whether he's worthy or not worthy, because we're not at that point yet. It's more that, why don't you give a chance for the community um, to discuss that? But I also wholeheartedly agree with, and uh, Doug helped me craft that part about somebody maybe um, having been out of office for 10 years and or deceased before we start naming everything after somebody else. And there's a cost of this too, if we did this and changing signs, things like that. But just wanted to share, Dan, you know, where this came from. Um, and uh, I, this, I also think this is a horrible time with what's going on with city council to start trying to recognize um, some, some people. We have to kind of let the dust settle with the um, crisis that they're going through with getting credibility back on, on their uh, council. So anyway, thanks for letting me put my two cents in. Thank you, Lori, and thank you for clarifying where this came from. I personally have long been opposed to naming anything after living a living person at all in almost any walk of life and under almost any circumstance. There are some exceptions, of course. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a not unique to Los Angeles, but it is frankly irritating to drive around town and see public facilities and buildings and meeting spaces named after not only living elected officials, but elected officials who are still in office. Uh, I've never understood that. It is, to, to my way of thinking, a uh, just a way to create a perk for uh, an, uh, an elected official. And uh, I won't be any harsher about it than that, but I'm glad you clarified this. And I, I, in reading it, I agree. They are, they are giving the uh, section, the section involved uh, giving information about it. And it really is taking it away from the specific case involved with our former city councilman. I would, uh, I would urge all, everybody to step back, as Lori says, particularly at this difficult time uh, in terms of public perception of the city council. Yeah. Uh, I, I would urge all of us to step back to follow procedures. And Lori points out very rightly, and it's it's stated in the in the body of the motion that. Uh, Part of our job is participating in this sort of information uh, deliberation uh, about things going on in the city, especially in our own neighborhood. And um, this does appear to be uh, a hasty, albeit long-standing practice of uh, city council members. And that I'm sure this happens throughout the country and throughout the rest of the world. But I do believe that elected officials need to understand that they're elected to do a job. They gain benefit from that and that any kudos coming to them should come as part of a community process yeah. in recognition of the fine work they've done. Any other comments, please? Agreed, Agreed with you. Yeah. I uh, don't see any other, oh. Vic Christensen, your hand is up, sir. Just more of a, a procedural thing. Are we are we voting on whether to basically change Coastal's name to our name in this, or are we just voting to in in uh, principle support it and then come back with an actual motion later, with you know an actual letter or something later? That's a that's a great question. Yes, I agree. It needs to be uh, tweaked, fine tuned, without changing the, the tenor of it or the detail of it. Uh, 
I would say, yes, this is a framework. I do, I do think it needs some recrafting. And uh, I would say that we would come back and, and vote on that later. Um, we'll be hearing a couple of things tonight that I'm looking, looking at my agenda that is proper. Um, there may be another item that will require some recrafting of a motion that might, might require a brief special meeting later for us before the board meeting in February. So to answer your question, Vic, it, in a very long-winded way, yes, this, the, the points in this letter are a framework for our letter. We're essentially endorsing what it says, but I would like to recraft some of it both for grammar and structure and we have a motion on the floor though how will we beginning gonna... middle no i'm not saying we'll do that now well so the motion is to to support right that's all support pacific right. uh, that's why i wanted to clarify motion as written um and with perhaps the thought that the wording can be recrafted a bit um uh, you know i'm not i i I've gotten in trouble over the years doing that. No, I would say the motion is to support the document in front of you, and I have no problem with it. We could, yeah, we could just send a letter with that in it. Yes, and I would change, just change the obvious typographical errors. Other than that, let's keep it simple. So, unless there's. Oh, sorry. Okay, thank you. Oops, oops. I almost yeah, left this is Lori again. I would just change Coastal Neighborhood Council and just say the Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood okay. Council um, supports us. And and if you need to think it needs grammar check, you better talk to Doug Epperhart. He's gonna. <laughs> it's just it, they're just they're just Lori. They're just typos. It's I know, I that. know. But but if I can suggest, that there might be a timeliness. I want to make sure that that and this is not a, yeah. a letter. This would be a community impact statement. Good. Um, because there's a council file. You're right. I've, I've uh, cut my teeth writing letters on this. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted right. to it's, clarify, is, but thank there's you. a little bit of a sense of timeliness to get the, to the port yes. committee, to, you know, so that's just my comment. You're absolutely right. So the motion is to support this community impact statement, inserting the name of our neighborhood council uh, instead of coastal. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Looking at the attendee list. Thank you. Very well. If there's uh, no further comment or questions, I'd like yeah, to- Yeah, I call for the question. Have Vic, have Vic do the roll call. Vic, will you please do the roll call? Doing the roll call? Okay. Um, are you recording the yeses and nos, John? It's, it, yeah, it's recording right now. It's in no. progress. Means. I'll write it. Go ahead, Vic. I'll write it. All right. Okay. Dan Dixon. Yes. John Barbera. Yes. Vic Christensen. I. John Demiglio. Yes. David Rivera. Yes. Cynthia Gagne. Yes. And that is it. So it is very good. Six six eyes, no nays, no abstentions. Uh, no abstentions. That passes. Thank you. That will be. Uh, transliterated into what's that word in there that i didn't recognize contradistinction that's right um th this will be sent as a community impact statement to um to the proper authorities and Lori, who's our community impact statement designated author um i think it's melanie Go I ahead. think so too. Okay, Melanie. I'm sorry, Vic. You you know better than I. So this will be forwarded to Melanie. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, everybody. John, if you'll put up my beginning of the letter to the Navy, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Without. Uh, we, we do have a guest here tonight who is fairly new to the community, I believe. So uh, 
we won't go into a long history of this, but uh, we're all familiar with the uh, Does everybody defense. see the letter? Yes, thank you, I can, so. And, and you can even make it bigger with your fingers. That's very cool. This, uh, this is a start of a letter. Uh, could, and, and I would um, request a, a motion to, no, I don't think we're to the motion stage yet. The defense fuel supply point property on North Gaffey Street, um, as we say, as I say in the opening paragraph here, our community of San Pedro has hosted the DFSP on a reservation of several hundred acres stretching along North Gaffey Street. The facility housed volatile fuels in underground tanks but we are unaware of any major or longstanding issues with the facility being located in the community. So the bottom line is uh, for our guests and just as a refresher for all of us, after 70 years, the underground fuel tanks along Gaffey were closed, drained and filled with uh, concrete that will last until the millennium. And so they are no longer useful. The Navy uh, is in talks with potential lessees for the property. The Navy is determined not, has determined that it shall, will not sell this property the way it did the Ponte Vista property above it, uh, up the hill from it, uh, and they will be leasing it out. And we wrote a letter in 2019 uh, stating our concerns about the property, our objections to what might be put there, and our hope that uh, we would be included in any discussions of what was to be put there. Well, the Navy for a long time now has been in negotiations over this property. I believe they are talking to one qualified uh, applicant, but there may be more than one. The problem is the Navy does not discuss ongoing commercial uh, negotiations such as this, we are told by the Navy, therefore we're not privy to what is really being talked about for that property. So this letter is a, a reminder to the Navy of the history of this facility in our neighborhood and our, and as I say here, we wish to make clear our wish that any future use of the property be no more intrusive than its original use. As we stated in our letter regarding the property in 2019, above ground tanks or heavy manufacturing or processing facilities are not in concert with the historic use of the property. Furthermore, and this really came as, a, as an idea from Chuck Hart and I, I agree with it, it's a, it, it's a largely flat property, but with hills uh, bordering it on the west and north and uh, a residential neighborhood on the south. And we would like to remind the Navy that we're suggesting that as much property as possible be designated as a buffer to act as habitat for wildlife and native plants. A portion of the property is already set aside to protect the Palos Verdes blue butterfly and this usage, uh, this usage must be maintained in our, in our judgment. I am wondering if this, <laughs> I wanna ask the committee, does this seem like enough or do we want to list uh, some, anything more that we would like to see the property used as for perhaps more importantly, what we don't want it to be used as. I think it's given, given the record they have from us of our position in 2019, I view this as kind of a reminder to the Navy. And I have no idea of the impact it will have, but we do want to stay on record as hoping to keep the property at, as reasonably close to how it has been used for 70 years as, as possible. 
So I would like to ask, am I allowed to make a motion? Why not? Depends on the motion. <laughs> I'd, like, <laughs> I'd like to move that this letter uh, after, uh, I want to hear from the committee. Do you think this is moving in the right direction? Does it need to be uh, rewritten or is it sufficient as it is? You're missing 19 something in the second paragraph. Oh, I, that, that's a right. historical record. I have, to, I have to look that up. That's simply- Right, just so you know. Looking it up. I, so I'm not, I'm actually not proposing that we uh, pass this as a motion tonight. I wanted to show it to the committee see if anyone had any thoughts on whether it should be more fiery, less fiery, more specific, or if it's about right. Nice. Well, Chuck's got his hand up. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chuck. Chuck. Hello, Chuck. Yes, sir. Unmute, Chuck. Unmute yourself. I'm sorry I'm late. I just got back to the doctor's office. It's okay. Um, I just scanned the letter. Um, I, I'm not concentrating on the details, but the gist, the gist of it is, as far as I'm concerned, just right. Uh, the uh, Especially the green space. And nothing should change with that because we live in the most polluted air almost in the country. And we need green. We need green. You always worry about these little, putting a tree here and a tree there <clears throat> on top of buildings and new construction. That is relatively speaking nonsense compared to the opportunity we have here <clears throat> to really do something for the environment. So I'm very strong on keeping this for green space open and not, <clears throat> furthermore, excuse me, <clears throat> furthermore, not putting any more uh, manufacturing or we think black top or whatever there than we have. I like the letter, I like the letter, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Anyone, any other comment? Oh, I still thought it was a good letter too. Thank you. Very yeah. good. Uh, then with that in mind, I want to tighten it up a little bit and, and have a beginning and an end. But I would like to um, finish finish it off and then ask you to approve it uh, next month and we'll pass it on to the board. Our understanding is still that uh, nothing will happen on the property as we understand it before, <clears throat> 2000, uh, before 2024. Thank you. Let us uh, move on. Jack, glad you're here because John, if you would uh, take that letter down and put up the letter about the trees on Westmont Drive, I would appreciate it. I don't have that letter. You don't? Chuck, this is Chuck's letter. Uh, One, did I? I wonder uh -oh. if I. It's the one you asked. Oh, the one you sent me. I forgot to say, hang on. You, you, you guys, you know, chatter was amongst it? chatter amongst yourselves right okay. now. Was it, was it posted on the uh, web page? No, I don't think so. Are those trees the ones adjacent to yeah. the greens area? They're the gardens rather, that area? Or is it's it down, down towards it, basically uh, from Gaffey up to Taper Avenue area? Chuck, Chuck will talk about it if we can get the letter up. That'd be great. Wasn't this one at the time when they were telling us, don't water the trees or we'll find you? And then all the trees died and now they're upset. And the city wants trees yeah. again. Yeah, Chuck. While John is while John is finding the letter, do you want to 
summarize what uh, what your letter says? Unmute. Uh, it says I'm muted. Am I muted? No, you, we can hear you now. Okay. Um, basically, well, it's going to be hard. <laughs> um, the trees were planted in. Oh, Chuck, Chuck, uh, forgive me, Chuck. I will interrupt. You're right. Your letters, your letters says it very clearly. So if we can get the letter up, that'll that'll save some time. If there's no, oh, hang on. <laughs> okay, there we go. There you go. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. So this is uh, Chuck's excellent letter. Well, I say excellent, that's an editorial opinion. This is his letter. Let me know when you want me to move it. And I, I think Chuck will stipulate that that's the south side, not the Cooth, the south curb, not the Cooth curb. Right. Yeah, I don't know why I went back after you corrected it. Great computers, eh? <laughs> At least we got the trees from down under. Mm -hmm. Yes. Actually, <clears throat> um, eucalyptus trees planted there because they're the ones that clean the air well but they they have a multitude of other issues unfortunately <laughs> yeah is that, is that being one uh, 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 they uh, they burn in fires and they snap in wind but they smell so pretty has everyone read the letter yes okay yep so um I'd like to ask uh, for a motion to uh, send this letter to the Harbor Department and the Council Office and Street Services. Scroll down, please. I think uh, the whole history of these trees here, this is just my comment, the whole history of these trees is sort of uh, typical of what goes on uh, in in as neighborhoods in this in this area and probably every area redevelop. A lot of attention is given to uh, pre-planning, to streetscape, to whatever whatever is being built, whether it's a uh, park or a commercial building or uh, whatever the project is. A lot of planning is done in the beginning and uh, a lot of nice things happen like planting beautiful trees. But <clears throat> as we know from how the city operates, uh, there is usually money to get projects built and there's usually money to rebuild them if they fall down, but there's very little money to maintain them. <sighs> <clears throat> very little money to maintain them. And I think we've seen the, these trees are an example of that, perfect example of that. Yeah. It seems like all we do is plant, let die, replant, let die. <clears throat> I, I, 
I think you're right, Cynthia. I think there is an element of uh, rinse and repeat, wash, win, rinse, repeat in all of this. So we're asking the, Chuck, your letter is asking the port to... Not the port. I'm sorry. Who is this directed to, Chuck, specifically? <laughs> Well, there, it's a city issue, but not a not important property. So, oh, okay. You That's name the, you name you named everyone before. I can't remember who. Everyone. Yeah, the port. You're right. The port side of the street is being covered in planning and land use. You're right, Chuck. So these this would go to uh, street services, council office, and the council office. If I may make an additional comment, just please. I, I anticipate there may be some. Here, here, here's the issue: the trees on the uh, 10, 11 hundred block, those beautiful trees that they had to remove. <coughs> the that area where I live is just a half block away, and that area is all landfill. It's with gravel and uh, adobe. So the root systems, they dig these little holes to plant these trees, but the root system can, cannot expand sufficiently to support them. So that's something when it's, if this does go forward, we have to stay on top of it and make sure this time they're done right, correctly. The, same, the same thing happened in the eight and 900 block, same way, it's all landfill there oh. to accommodate the, uh, the flood control channel that goes through there. So anyway, that's something we have to keep in mind uh, when it's, if this does goes forward. I pray that it does. Thank you. And I would point out, by the way, Chuck, this is in Chuck's neighborhood, but his home is more than 500 feet from any of the trees that are being discussed here. So um, he can participate in this in this discussion, and he can participate in the motion. Vic has so, got his hand up. I'm sorry. Vic. Vic, please. Uh, this is just a, a clarification of part of the letter and the part that's in the middle of the screen right now, the, the, after it says every tree and a were a, is that first a excess and it should just say and were a liability? Or is there something else? It, it, no, and were a liability, you're correct. Okay, I didn't know if there was something missing or what's that. So I, I'm not sure we've heard a motion on this. We have we have to, do we have to define exactly where they are? Because they're not gonna go looking for them. We know where they are, but the letter doesn't say that. You know, they plant them every so many feet. I just, but, you know. Should we say between this street and this cross street so they know? The, the, the cross he, gives, he gives the block, he gives the block numbers. Okay. That's sufficient. Alrighty. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank it's a good question, Cynthia, but it's uh, the clever folks in the city will be able to figure it out. Okay. So uh Jack, are you uh, moving that this uh letter be sent to the People we've mentioned. I, I am. If I if I'm allowed to do that, yes, absolutely. <laughs> do I hear? A, do I hear a second? I'll second it. I love trees. Okay. Thank you, Cynthia. Well, yeah. Thank you. Um, I think the letter speaks for itself. We know it's a process. It's not an instant fix, but we need to remind the council office and street services that uh, these trees that which were planted to beautify this section of San Pedro are uh, neglected or have been removed and they need to be tended to and replaced. Mm -hmm. So if there's no further comment, Oh, somebody needs to somebody needs to mute there. Thank you.
Uh, okay, okay, Victor, will you uh, take take the vote, please? Okay, Dan Dixon. Yes. John Barbera. Yes. Vic Christensen, I. John Domiglio. Yes. David Rivera. Yes. Cynthia Gagne. Yes. Chuck Hart. Yeah. And it is unanimous. Seven eyes, no nay. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the next item is just uh, inform informative. Am I looking? Is does everybody have item six? The dash line is that because again my. My agenda is compromised, but item six is the dash line in in uh, not not in our part of Northwest, but in the southern end of it. Uh, the DOT and Metro made recently made changes to uh, bus routes at the southern end of our neighborhood council area. And forgive me, I, I am not confident of the streets involved, but uh, one route was changed and the bus, the bus route down, I believe 13th street was changed to a much narrower street. I believe it was 11th maybe. And I, I mentioned this because our new uh, city councilman has g gone to work and as obstreperous and unchangeable as the DOT uh, and Metro are about changing things. And I shouldn't say obstreperous, but there's a huge process involved in ever modifying a route. Well, they modified it. They uh, moved it back to the wider street and uh, the narrower street, which was a problem because we don't think that two buses, buses could pass each other on the street with parking on both sides, uh, that has been moved back to the original wider street. So this is just a, a point, I think, a, a, a positive note to say that our new councilman and his staff are, uh, hear about things and uh, they're going to work on it. And it's pretty encouraging. That's really, that's really all that is now. The next step will be to approach them about the original idea to uh, add a bus line from Park Western Shopping Center uh, down to Target. That uh, has been taken off the table, but with the new council, uh, regime in District 15, maybe we can make some progress on that again. It'll take time, but at least with this new uh, uh, new office holder, I think we can be on, be on his radar. And that'll be pretty exciting. John Barbera, item seven, would you comment on that please? Yeah, this is, um, it, okay, you guys know where, you know, La Brisa and Big Nick is. This one where the the donut shop is and La Brisa, in between there was a building there that, uh, that nobody was using. As you can see, it had aluminum foil all over the front of the windows and everything. And apparently there was a, an African-American big, big guy and carried a ghost gun and uh, you know we had said uh, we had gone down uh dan and i to the police station and told them about this, that it just it doesn't seem right and people were going in and out of there so they looked into it and apparently it was an illegal dispensary and they did uh they the gentleman that carried the gun that was there security he uh he built an illegal ghost gun and it wasn't he had no permit or nothing for it 
So they had arrested him and they shut the business down and arrested the people that were doing it. So um, the only legitimate dispensary is actually Stone Age across the street. How these guys got it got in there and they rented the building to them and who knows what, but at least they, um, I was told early this month or early, yeah, early this month towards the end, actually the end of December that they had, they had uh, shut the business down and arrested everybody that was involved with it. So. I mean, this was encouraging to, it should be encouraging to everybody, but especially particularly John and I who talked to the uh, senior lead officers about it. And in fact, talked to somebody on the uh, narcotics task force and uh, to their credit, uh, I'm not even sure they knew about this particular outlet at the time, but uh, they went to work and it took a few months, but they shut it down and we're yeah. very, we're grateful for it. And the one amusing anecdote I'll relate about this is that John mentioned Las Brisas restaurant and the donut shop. This uh, dispensary was between Las Brisas Mexican restaurant and the donut shop. When we uh, were looking for how this dispensary might be operating, we drove around the back of the building and spotted a door and it had been suggested that someone was dispensing drugs out of the back door. So we passed that along to the police, but subsequently we went back and looked and that door is the door to Las Brisas restaurant. So <laughs> the back of their kitchen. So they were not in fact dispensing drugs out the back door, they were dispensing them out the front door. In any event, we're pleased that uh, there's been a positive positive result. And the folks, the senior lead officers and the other officers we spoke to made it clear that they want, they want to be as aware as possible and they are aware of a lot of the illegal uh, dispensary activity going on. And they uh, are, are working to, to make sure that only licensed uh, facilities operate. And we're pleased about that. Is that it? Is that our uh, seven? Okay. That's our meeting. That's it. Fabulous. Our next meeting will be February 28th. My gosh, the end of next month. And uh, we'll have that uh, letter regarding the Defense Fuel Supply Depot, uh, hopefully for your review and approval. The two items we did uh, pass tonight will be uh, put, in, uh, put in the right format and sent to the appropriate uh, personages and bodies. And with that, unless, uh, unless as we used to say in the scouts, anyone has anything for the good of the troop. <laughs> I will thank you all for attending. I wanna thank, uh, thank our guest and for being here. And we will see you all, uh, see you all in the neighborhood. <laughs> okay. Or we'll see you at the board meeting. That too. <laughs> oh yeah, the board meeting, that's coming. <laughs> Actually, it's rather late next month, so it'll be almost three weeks before the board meeting. Yeah. But we will uh, take these action items up there and be on the lookout, colleagues, be on the lookout for uh, things that need attending to in our neighborhood. Lord knows there are plenty. And uh, whether it's a, a raised sidewalk or a gigantic pothole, uh, we know that the city tries hard when, when approached properly, they try hard to do the right thing and, and accommodate the repair of repairs and, and, and uh, maintenance of things that need attending. So keep an eye out, keep us posted and thank you very much.
Okay. Yeah, we did have a, with this rain that, you know, we did have a few trees come down in the street. Um, That's right. With this rain uh, over by uh, uh, one of them. And they, and they responded pretty quick. Uh, there was one when you go down first from Western made a left on first street and you go down and make a left on Walker right there. There was a tree right there that was down right in front yeah. of the, some homes, but they came out that same day and mulched it, cut it up, zapped it, did what they did and put all the stuff back in the, in the dirt there. And uh, yeah. And then I, I heard there was another, another one close to Holy Trinity that went down. So to the you know, city's credit, they if, if something is a real hazard like that, they they respond very quickly. So we're happy about that. Yes. So many thanks, everyone. Look forward to seeing you all 